It all started with this. Oh my God. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to Matagata Lake. And a bit of, you know, a tiny little trip to Hypocrite City because it's November 1st. And locally, there's a radio station that at midnight on the 31st started playing Christmas music. And I think that's horrible. <laughs> and I always kvetch about people doing their Christmas stuff in September. I just got heads up on a video that some lady has already got her December daily all laid out, her plans are all done. It was October. October. December dailies are essentially done, which kind of defeats the purpose in my ever so humble opinion about what December dailies are. But that's neither here nor there. Not my circus. Not my monkeys. I don't care. When I started this channel, I wanted to give my take and kind of share things that I wasn't seeing other places. And this, my friend, is one of those things. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe, I don't know. It takes over. I am yet again sorting craft stuff today. Not by choice. And I'm not visiting Hypocrite City by choice. I tend to do a lot of spring cleaning in the spring, but also in the fall. And I have made my way through the house into my bedroom closet. In my bedroom closet were bags and tins and stacks of Christmas stuff left over from the whirlwind that was my life when I decided, I think it was just after Thanksgiving last year, to do an entire junk journal themed Christmas tree. I watched Natasha at Treasure Books make these beautiful little tiny journals and I looked at my naked tree and I thought, it's go time. And I gathered up every single piece that I had that was ever Christmas related and I made journals and bookmarks and round notebooks and 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 little envelopes and there's a whole playlist. I'll link it below in case you missed it. Not a lot of people watched it. I think maybe, you know, because people are doing Christmas stuff in October and I have as usual, was late to the party because it was December when I was decorating my junk journal themed Christmas tree. <laughs> but all this stuff, all this beautiful stuff, I, I, at the end of it, you know, like anything, like a crazy big holiday party, you just want to sell the house instead of clean the mess, you know? So I just put it in these bags and, well, now I'm cleaning, hyper cleaning to get ready to bunker in for the winter and all this stuff is in my closet. And so I decided to sort it because my office studio is now newly sorted. Vintage, bright, and black and white is how I am sorting everything in my studio. So I decided that I was going to do that for my Christmas, December, winter stuff as well. It's obvious that I have enough here to do about, I don't know, 108 journals for real. Like stacks of beautiful Christmas wrap. This is all vintage. I had a vintage calendar, vintage looking paper. You know, back in the day when I used to make cookies and stuff, that's kind of vintage now because I don't do that stuff anymore. This is from Artie Mae's collection last year. Vintagey, uh, older stuff, things from the 60s, 70s and earlier or that at least harken back to that time. This tiny, teeny, tiny little scrapbook I found. This was in my stocking one year. Oh, how far we've come. Holy Hannah. You know, this should have been enough. <laughs> uh, to bright, which means the super white paper versus the off-white papers. So all these things are kind of modern. This pile is all my, my modern stuff. Bright white. Even though this is kind of vintage, it's printed on bright white paper and I'm not gonna vintage it up. So that'll go in the bright. You know, beautiful. Beautiful beastlies. White whites. Things that are nice and bright, but still Christmassy. This is all different wrapping paper that I'll be using for pages. I have this beautiful stack of fabric. This was from a, th a thrift haul. This little goodie is a tiny little cape that I wore when I was five that my great aunt made for a wedding that I was the flower girl in. It was a winter wedding. It was beautiful. I may cut this up. It's this beautiful velvet vintage. It's 50 years old, artificial yellowed fur. So I may 
I may cut this up. It has a satin lining, so I might just open the seam and stick a book cover in there so that the inside will be the satin, the outside will be the velvet, and use the fur trim to trim it out. Maybe put the fur on the spine or something. But there's no sense. It's been hanging around closets in this family for 50 years. It's time to either get rid of it or do something with it. So that's my plan. Cut her up. Make a book out of it. Something that, you know, I'll keep. I'll have it on the shelf. It'll remind me of Christmas's past. I also got this beautiful fuzzy furry material. I have a Christmas stocking for the Bostons made of this, a huge stocking. And I, I can never find one like it, but I found the material that it's made from. So I'm gonna make them at least one more, maybe a couple. I have a whole stack of these gift books. I talked recently about how many different ways to use them. If you haven't seen the video, it'll be out soon, or it was just out I'm about making use of these gift books. I've talked before about Susan Branch. Her stuff is every bit as beautiful as Edith Holden, uh, a little more modern, of course, but every bit as beautiful. Now these are teeny tiny little things that we can use to cut out. And because it's more modern, it's a lot easier to get a hold of. Susan Branch stuff. So if you're looking for Edith Holden-like stuff, uh, try Susan Branch and Sarah Mida, M-I-D-D-A, very similar styles. But these can be used as glue books. Uh, you could tear the pages out and use them as tuck-ins. You can cut them up, make little altered books instead of the traditional bigger altered book. There's all kinds of things. One of my favorite things about Christmas is the tags. And so I always keep my, my tags. I, I have them... There's some that are 50 years old, not in this box, but I, I keep them all the time. They've always made me happy, so that's what I'm keeping. Look at... I took them out Beastly's 20 years ago. The puppy's name is Kuka, and the kitties are Willow and Boo. Boo Boo was found on Halloween, so of course. So fun. Vintage, very vintage. That goes in the vintage pile, but I keep those. So I have this little box of these. Also part of the mix, I went through all of my scrapbook papers and got any bits and parts and pieces, stickers, papers, remnants, scraps, anything that was holiday related. Uh, most of this is bright, you know, the white, white. This Susan Branch, I think I got it at a, one of my thrift hauls. It's probably... Uh, stickers from Susan Branch, and I think these will go both in vintage and in brights. She she was really, really popular in the late 80s, early 90s, so that's vintage. Sorry, that's vintage now. I think for me, vintage is not more is more about a look than an age, because of course we can age up anything. We can make it look vintage. So it's more about color, bright white versus off-white primarily, but I think her stuff could go either way. I also have some bits of vellum. I have a Christmas sentiments digikit that's in here. Digikits from my store, digikits from other people's store. These are digikits. I think this is Artsology. Of course, Artie Mays puts out amazing holiday kit. Here's my drink up branches Christmas quotes. One of the most glorious messes in the world is the mess created in the living room on Christmas Day. Don't clean up too quickly. A lot of them have, you know, a lot of them are from comics. A lot of them are Grinchy related because I'm, I'm Grinchy. And they're just fun, you know, just fun adult humor. Napkins, you know, anything that was related went into these, into this collection. <laughs> tissue paper, don't forget tissue paper. Blank labels written on labels, stamps, beautiful Christmas stamps. You know, there's so many options to to build up a beautiful project, Christmas related, if you're into that sort of thing. I stocked up on these tins, and if you watch the, the video about making all the journals, I made such good use of these. This was a uh, kind of a homely Barbie themed tin. I just took one of my favorite digikits and glued it on there and then put twine around it uh, and some Mod Podge over it because it's getting it's it's getting a workout. And I just took the scraps and put it around again, covered up all the Barbie stuff. But I love this tin. And so these each have 
you know, parts that are ready to go, parts that are almost ready to go. They're, they're, each tin has its own little meaning. This bag is filled with um, stickers and stamps and things that I can use in all the journals, whether it's black and white, vintage, or otherwise. I bought Christmas washi for my junk journal themed Christmas tree projects because I, ha I had no Christmas washi. So you gotta have Christmas washi if you're gonna do junk journal themed Christmas tree. I also have blues, shiny, silver, blue, anything that's blue, snowflakey, wintery, because I did a blue digikit last year, a winter, winter digikit. Doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. Oh, it got wet. Here's what it looks like. So I, I have, this was a flyer that came from an auto parts store nearby, an advertising flyer that I just used my kit to transform into a mini folio. But what I think I will do is print these sheets out, fold them in half, print them double-sided, fold them in half, and make, make a wintry little journal out of it. And uh, some of my favorite digikits. Oh, this is so beautiful. Mini pages. My Christmas words. This is a digikit on my Etsy store as well. Again, all wintry, kind of silver and gray. So it would go with any theme. And if you print it on coffee dyed paper, it could be a vintage one as well. Big fun. So I have that. This book cover perfectly fits. Pages folded in half, which is how I like to do things. Eight and a half by 11 paper folded in half. This cover fits perfectly. So I'm going to cover it in probably either this fabric or this fabric might use this one for the for the bright I don't know so I'm gonna cover it in some way and then make a traditional junk journal with signatures put in this one I have a bright red very ready for Christmas glue book it's got a vinyl top so I may just leave it for ease sake but oh why do it easy I may gesso it and then put a vintage um, digikits over it or something but I thought this would be fun for a glue book because I've got all kinds of things that I've collected from my magazine harvests that I don't know where to put I don't want to put it in my in my books because this really doesn't have anything to do with me but I like them so where am I going to put the Christmas stuff oh I know in a Christmas glue book this book I got at Walden Books at a mall that tells you how old it is. Right after my grandma passed away, I was big into angels. And I think this is a really good example of a good book binding versus a cheap book binding. I'm trying to see when I started this. I started, I bought the journal in, I think it was 95 or 96, but I didn't quite know what to do with it. And then in 2002, for some reason, decided I wanted to start a Christmas journal, just a written Gary's Christmas journal. Just writing down, there's no decorations in here. There's nothing glued in here. It's just all writing. So I bought it 95, 96, and I started writing in it in 2002 through 2020. Not quite 20 years. And it's still really solid. You know that it's not kitty wampus. Everything still matches up, but it's full. It is, every page is filled. And I love the tradition. And so I got a similar size blank journal from Walmart last year. And it is so kitty wampus already. You see the spine is bent and I've done nothing to it. I have not, I've not used it. This is not even a year old. So I, I fear what it's going to look like in 20 years when it's full. But I'm going to make another one, just collage the cover. And I may do just a few bits and pieces of pretties on the page just because just because. So here's where I think I go wrong. I have way too much stuff. So you newbies out there who think you need a lot of stuff for newbies to save you from maybe making similar mistakes or save you some time or what I notice my favorite junk journalers on TV do, they have all their stuff at, at arm's reach, it seems. Uh, and I do really, really well if I have everything at arm's reach. So I'm going to do another video on how I've managed to do that. I don't have one of those way cool dream boxes where literally you sit in the center of everything you have and everything is in with within arm's reach reach and it makes it so much easier than having to dig through stuff and go find stuff and I just I would rather not do it then so don't think that you need a whole lot because you don't it's really easy to slippery slope thrifting for junk journal supplies thrill of the hunt it's super super fun and you do find all kinds of goodies but like I said I've got more stuff now than 
a hundred people need. So come either before Christmas or just after the new year, I am going to start breaking down all of the stuff that I have that's overflow, that's not going to fit in my room, sell sell some of my stuff because in, in a mixture. And so, you know, I have 10 books sharing pages from each of them. Instead of you having to have 10 books, you can have 10 pages from my books, right? That kind of stuff. Because I have a lot of great finds. If you've watched my thrift videos, more than more than I need, more than I can store. And if it's more than you can store, don't keep it. It will make your life miserable because you'll be cleaning it and moving yeah, it and okay. not being able to find stuff. And oh, who needs frustration? It's supposed to be fun. So heed my warning, newbies. <laughs> Don't do as I've done. Treat yourself to some new things, of course. If you see a really great, you know, you find an Edith Holden book, snatch that bad bear up. But don't feel like you have to buy a million tons of stuff because you don't so watch in december because my plan last year when i put all this together my plan was come december 1st not november 1st december 1st i am going to just play with my december stuff i'm gonna get in the mood and i'm gonna i'm just gonna play with my christmas stuff whether it be my glue book or my vintage book or my new bright book or maybe a black and white project all december i'm gonna be playing with December stuff because tis the season. November's not the season. But I wanted to show you all of this before I put it all away and have this little chat with you. Does this resonate with you? Do you have too much stuff? How do you deal with it? Do you find that you do crafting more often if your stuff is readily available and easily accessible? And how do you have any organizational tips? I'd love to know it because I'm always always looking to do it better, faster, more organized, more streamlined than I was before. So love to hear from you. Happy November. Enjoy November for fall and for Thanksgiving and all the things that November is. Worry about December when December gets here. I'm going to take the next exit off this highway out of Hypocrite City and back to my regularly scheduled program. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Mate at the lake, out for now.